Founded in 1984, Charleston Forge manufactures high-end steel and wood furniture. The company is highly regarded for its fashion-forward designs and its commitment to unrivaled quality and unfailing customer service. All of our furniture starts with bases built out of raw steel purchased from a supplier close to our Boone, North Carolina factory. Steel is heated to roughly 1200 degrees in order to make it soft enough to be hammered and tapered using foot-operated hydraulic hammers. Heating and hammering the metal creates texture that helps play on the natural look and feel of the steel. Heating the steel causes the metal surface to oxidize, leaving a subtle yet distinct texture known as scaling. Jigs are used in the forging process to ensure consistent bends when creating such things as curved table and chair legs. Each piece of furniture that is produced is a testament to the skill and care that goes into it. Once all the component pieces of a base are complete, they are ready to be welded. Here a Ventura dining table starts coming together. While welding jigs are used for many pieces, some are built using clamps to ensure proper setup. Great care is taken to ensure that all of the components are properly aligned to create a symmetrical and level base. Initial tack welds hold the piece together during setup, allowing for adjustment that may need to be made before the final welds. Once the welder is satisfied that everything is properly aligned, the final permanent welds are applied. If the frame is destined to have a wood top, the final step in the fabrication process is to attach tabs that will hold the top in place. A final check is made to ensure that the base is level. The welds are then smoothed down with a grinder and the finished frame moves on to the paint line. The first stage in preparing product for painting is removing scaling and any other loose surface material to give the powder coat an even, stable surface to adhere to. This is accomplished using the wheel abrader. This room-sized machine works just like a giant sandblaster, but uses tiny, abrasive steel shot instead of sand to remove the top layer of metal from the steel frames. Prior to going through the wheel abrader, frames show the darkening, scaling, and oxidization associated with the processes of forging and welding. Wheel abrading leaves the frames with a smooth, even surface, ideal for powder coating. Frames are then hung on a conveyor belt that first runs them through a five-stage washer. The washer uses a light detergent to remove any dust, dirt, or oils that remain on the frames. A rust prevention undercoat is also applied to further ensure the durability of the powder coating. Once through the washer and prior to entering the drying oven, each piece is blown off using compressed air. This ensures that when it emerges from the drying process, no water remains hung up on the welds or anywhere else. Following the drying oven, frames climb the conveyor belt into the powder coating booth. Powder coat paint is far superior to wet spray painting 
as it results in a more consistent and even coat, free of drips or runs. Powder coat painting is, as the name suggests, painting using a dry powdered polymer paint that is applied electrostatically. As the powder is blown through the gun, it is given a static charge that helps the paint adhere to the frame. A skilled painter can quickly and thoroughly cover each frame with a consistent, even layer, producing the best results possible. Frames then continue on the conveyor belt and pass slowly through a curing oven. Inside the 360 degree oven, the powdered paint goes through a chemical reaction that causes it to simultaneously melt and dry into the even, resilient finish that powder coating is known for. Once out of the oven, frames that are receiving a standard finish powder coat only are moved into the assembly department. Frames that are getting a premium or hand painted finish go to the hand paint area. The more than half dozen hand painted finishes involve anywhere from one to five steps in order to reach the desired look. A lacquer finish ensures their durability. Like more than 90% of the materials we use, our wood tops come from North Carolina vendors. Our stock species are oak, maple, and walnut, though other species can be custom ordered. Cut to size, shaped, and with the edge details already in place, the tops get a final sanding by hand in our Boone, North Carolina factory. Once sanded, the tops move on to our wood finishing area where they are stained and lacquered. Like all our furniture bases, all our tops are finished to order. Our finishes range from the deep luster of raven to the warmth of nutmeg and all the way to the more muted tones of alpine and wheat. We offer 10 different finishes on maple and nine on oak. Walnut is available with a clear coat only. Steel comes together with wood in the assembly department where frames are once again checked for level and imperfections. Wood tops are fastened into place in preparation for shipping, while frames with glass tops are checked for sizing before the top ships in its own box. The assembly department is also where upholstered products meet their made-to-order cushions. Customers can choose from a wide range of stock fabrics and leathers or supply their own. Once assembled, the furniture moves on to boxing. Boxes are cut to size using our state-of-the-art on-demand packaging system. Each box is cut to size, which ensures optimal protection of the piece, as well as keeping cardboard waste to a minimum. Sheet cardboard is fed into the box maker, where it is cut and scored for folding and fed out to be assembled. All our furniture is wrapped and the feet protected before being placed in its box.
spacers are placed around the product to further protect it during shipping. Once the box is ready to head for its new home, it's moved over to the shipping department where it awaits pickup by one of our many specialized furniture carriers.